Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to the old Curiosity Shop. Guess where we're going today? Somewhere where I've never taken you, and it only takes me just under an hour to get there. That is Atlantic City. Now, I've got some business to take care of, and it's not with the slot machines. No. I did that about 30 years ago, as soon as I was allowed to. Lost $20, and that was it for me. No, 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 no. We're on our way to a Goodwill, and it's one I have never taken you to before. It is located just outside of Atlantic City. Let's go. Well, there it is. I like the little Art Deco thing on the roof there, on the facade. Does that mean we're going to find some Deco? Hmm. Hmm. Well, the first thing I see that captures my attention are these two lamps on the floor notice that's a 1940s Bakelite plug mm-hmm but these are weird it almost looks like somebody chopped up legs off of a Jacobean table and made lamps out of them yeah that's exactly what it looks like those look like the legs on a 1930s Jacobean dining room table there's another old plug uh, what are they ten dollars each now no, 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 no. We can do better than that. Okay. Oh, look at those 80s, 1980s lamps. Pushing my cart along here. Mm. This is the first time I've been to this shop. Now, here are two lamp bottoms. Mm, no. No, no. No, I, I was hoping they were 19, a pair of 1930s boudoir lamps, but they're not. Leave them there. They didn't light up my life. <laughs> Leave them there. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. I have to tell you, when I walked in this place, it appeared as though it was going to be quite an experience. And I need to just warn you right now, if you've got something else to do, go do it. <laughs> because n nothing exciting is going to happen in this video. I mean, I'm just going to go ahead. Well, I don't want to ruin the end of the movie, but it's not a murder mystery. Let me tell you, folks, I really don't find anything. But when I leave here, I'm going to another store. And I find a couple little pieces of depression glass. I'll show you that in a minute. Isn't this riveting entertainment? Well, what is that? Royal China? Well, hold it still. Okay, so finally, we've got some Anchor Hawking Forest Green. Yeah. Okay, five bucks. The saucers, that's the charm pattern, but there are no cups, and those saucers don't really do much on their own. So I left them there. Yep. If I had found the teacups, I would have bought them. All right, now let's see. There's that brown drip stuff. Some false graph. Eh, I'm not finding anything from the olden days. What is this? Stoneware? Japan. Oh, that's all I need is another great big stack of dishes. No, I'm not going to buy those. All right. Well, oh, okay. Finally, we have a little, this is a, called a lemon server. Yeah, it's depression glass. It's nice, elegant, it's etched dog on it. Look at the crack right there. You see that right there at the top of the heart handle? That's not a seam. No, I looked at it very carefully. It is a crack. <sighs> yep. In a bad spot. Uh, a lot of EAPG pressed glass. This one I wanted to see. It's signed. You see it? There's a diamond. I'm trying to get you to see it. Um, partially underneath of the um, uh, price tag. 
and sometimes it'll say press cut or near cut or there's some other things that can be stamped on there but I was feeling it over and it had a lot of chips on it now I'm out of focus <laughs> this thing had chips on it too it was attractive you know I always look at the clear glass now this uh, let me tell you what this was just a hot mess this is their picture frame department okay and this is just the way I found it I mean there wasn't anybody in there tearing it up that print over there of the La Last Supper was not an old one well I did find this it's you know 1960s uh, sewing you know sewing basket you put it the side of your little table there so you can sit there and darn socks while you're watching I Love Lucy. Well, that was okay. That was the only thing I found. Someone will, enjoy, will, will like that. So that went in the cart. But yeah, this is the way they have their picture frames displayed. I mean, wow, stuff was just all over the place. Now this is the only thing that would really bring big bucks not my style, but it's a 19, you know, late 60s, early 70s, burnt orange. Those are uh, either teak or walnut handles there in chrome. It had already been sold. I was going to call my mid-century buddy and say, come on down and get this. Because believe it or not, that thing... Well, I already know the title of this video. Eh. Eh. <laughs> You know there are a lot of days that are just eh. the goodwill where I just from from whence I just came is in Pleasantville and it wasn't a very pleasant experience it was kind of a hot mess I just turned the camera off you don't want to see a bunch of uh, dollar store donations which is basically what it was um, yeah I just didn't find much but so other than this yeah, 1960s sewing basket thing and that was it okay oh well what am I tangled up in who knows that's the only thing I found in that store but uh, right across from Atlantic right across from Atlantic City High School was a uh, Salvation Army I don't normally go to Salvation Army's because I don't have too many where I am and and when I do go they're usually not that great but look what I found in the Salvation Army you know I collect individual depression cups and saucers and here's one 99 cents for the cup and 99 cents for the saucer it's a pattern that I don't think I have now look closely it looks a lot like American Pioneer but it's not it's just plain old hobnail and not moonstone but hobnail and that's what Anchor Hawking called it. So early to mid 30s, 32 to 36, something like that. And um, of course, basically the same pattern, but when they put the white opalescent on there, it's then the moonstone. But this is plain old hobnail. One of the things that almost always gives Anchor Hawking away, they love these banded rings and they put rings uh, on mm, many, many, many different patterns one cup and one saucer just to add to my individual cup and saucer collection which is is what I have then I found two plates I didn't really I think I think these might be cabbage rows yeah they might be but no they might be something blossom mm-hmm it's some kind of blossom I have to go and look up look it up I don't remember it's in my little it's in my little I guess I could look it up right now I never go anywhere without my little travel guide my depression glass uh, travel guide here so to speak this is one of those little blossom patterns two plates small luncheon plates they were only 99 cents each and there are no chips or cracks on them so it's nice to get some depression glass I have two more pieces to show you show you and one of them, uh, they are two nice little pieces of blown glass 
we have a pretty blue one and a pretty cranberry one. Now they're not crackled glass. I don't know if you can see. They just this is a quilted pattern or a diamond pattern, and that's got a paneled paneled pattern. Um, 99 cents on that one. A dollar 99 on that one. No marks on the bottom. Probably made in West Virginia. Aha! Why did I really get these? Well. The main reason why I bought both of them is if you look closely at this one, this one is dirty and it's got one of two things. This is either sick glass, which means it will not clean, or it's cleanable glass. So it's got some deposits, it's got just old dirt or some calcium deposits on it. Remember, you old time glass collectors know there is a difference. There's some glass that you can clean because the cloudiness is a result of some residue on the surface. There's a whole other category of glass called sick glass that you can't repair because the cloudiness doesn't come from something on the surface. The cloudiness comes from damage to the glass. We usually see that when things are murdered in dishwashers. Um, so, and it's hard to tell out in the wild but there are a few tips so I bought this we are going to later on I'm going to collect four or five pieces of glass that has this and we're going to try different experiments and see which ones we can clean and which ones we can't and I want to also say it's not a matter of what method you use if you've got damaged glass yeah meaning the cloudiness is not on the surface but from tiny little cracks all over the surface of the glass. If you've got that kind of damage, it doesn't matter. Vinegar, denture cleaner, toothpaste, lemon juice, who cares? You can't clean it. So don't start recommending, hold on, remedies for cleaning glass. We're not going to do that now. We're going to do that sometime in the future. So anyway, I'm going to be collecting some dirty glass. <laughs> Um, and this piece also has some cloudiness down in there. I don't know, but can you see it? Yeah, yeah so we're gonna we're gonna revisit those later. Okay That was it um, I'm just outside of Atlantic City and I always have a beach chair and I always have a beach chair and swim trunks in a gym bag somewhere in this truck So let's go for a swim